Well, we've announced Raspberry Pi 5. I'm excited about the new little PCI Express connector. We have a new Pi. It's finally here. Hey Robot Makers, Raspberry Pi have just announced the new Raspberry Pi 5. It's absolutely packed full of new features, so let's take a look. The Raspberry Pi 5 is the first full-size Raspberry Pi to feature the new RP1 Southbridge processor. And there is also the brand new Vidcore 7 GPU running at 800MHz. Combine this with the brand new Wi-Fi interface and the desktop experience is buttery smooth. It's vastly more powerful than, than Pi 4. Yeah. Um, it's something like, uh, it's sort of between, we say two, between 2 and 3x, um, probably for CPU performance on the 3x end of that. Yeah. Uh, makes it about getting on for 150 times as powerful as a Raspberry Pi 1. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a lovely it's a lovely device. Um, yeah, the so software stacks is, is, is in really good shape. We've got good, good software for launch. Um, and we're just super excited to see what people think of it. Yeah. Previous Raspberry Pis had a single camera and a single display connector. These have now been moved together and you can now have two displays or two cameras or any combination. The HDMI also gets a boost and can now run two 4K monitors at a full 60 frames per second. Networking also gets a boost and now supports PoE+, which with the additional hat can support up to 30 watts of power. The USB 3 controller can now support 5 gigabits of simultaneous operation. The Pi 5 also has a brand new power management chip which can negotiate power requirements from the charger. The built-in GPU also gets a boost. This now runs at Vidcore 7 at 800 MHz. Now supports OpenGL ES 3.1 and Vulkan 1.2. The physical dimensions are exactly the same as the E4. There are some subtle changes such as the Ethernet connector and the USB connector has now been switched around to the previous orientation. A couple of other notable additions are the power button and there is now a real-time clock with an external battery connector. Just where do you want it? Here. Hi, Evan. Talk to me about what you've announced today. Uh, well, we've announced Raspberry Pi 5. It's a great day for us. It's a product that we've been working on pretty much forever. Uh, you know, we've been working on it since 2016. So wow. if you think about it, when we launched 3 Plus, we were working on it. When we launched 4, we were working on it all the way through the pandemic, all the way through the supply chain issues, we were working on Pi 5. So this is yeah. a huge project for the team here. Um, we spent something like $25 million on it. It's wow. not cheap at all. Yeah. Uh, it has Raspberry Pi silicon on for the first time, not, yes. in the, not in the core socket, but in the IO controller socket. Yeah. Uh, it's another 40 nanometer TSMC chip. Uh, interesting, if you think about it, it says RP1 on it. Yes. RP2040 says RP2 on it. <laughs> uh, RP2 doesn't stand for RP2040. Yeah. RP2 is the second chip we started. RP1 is the first chip we started, so actually this spans the whole of the whole of yeah. silic silicon engineering here at Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Um, so it's, look, it's a big day for us. It's it's vastly more powerful than Pi than Pi Four. Yeah. Um, it's something like uh, it's sort of between we say two between two and three x, um, probably for CPU performance on the three x end of that. Yeah. Uh, makes it about getting on for 150 times as powerful as a Raspberry Pi One. Yeah. Um, so it's a it's a lovely it's a lovely device. Um, yeah, the so software stacks is, is is in really good shape. We've got good good software for launch, um, and we're just super excited to see what people think of it. Hey Chris, how are you doing? So what do you make of um, the announcement today? It's it's fantastic news. We have a, a new Pi Pi number five. So it's a it's always great to see a new Raspberry Pi. Is there anything specific that you're excited about with this release? I think. The interesting thing about the Pi 5 is that I've looked at lots of SBCs. This is my 60th SBC. And normally you look at an SBC and you go, oh, it's that feature or that feature that, that leaps out at you. And this, this board is slightly different because you straight away see it's got a more powerful processor, it's got a more powerful GPU. But beyond that, it's not immediately obvious why this is a, a, an innovation. You have to think about it a bit. I call it the cerebral Pi because a lot of what they're doing here is to focus on removing bottlenecks in, in input output uh, for all the connectivity, um, which is one of the things that, you know, a lot of, lot of SBC manufacturers don't do. They give us lots of features, but they don't work terribly well. And this board is really focused on saying all the features on the board are going to work really, really well. And I think that's a very interesting approach, but it does mean, I think when people first see this, you have to think about it a bit and then, and you go, 
ah, that's actually, that's quite a clever pie. One of the reasons I, I reached out to you to uh, have a conversation about the Raspberry Pi 5 is, as you've said, you've, you've tested over 60 now single board computers. How does this one stack up, do you think? Um, obviously, probably not had time to compare it against all the other um, 59 <laughs> boards that are out there, but I guess you've had a, a cursory look and uh, had, a, had a bit of an idea and a feel for it. it indeed, you're, you're capturing me mid-testing. I've, I've been filming it a lot and now moving on to the software side of things. And I mean, the first thing is the actual experience of using it is very good. The desktop experience is very, very fluid. You know, it just works. You know, if you want to open up a web browser and open up multiple tabs and play video and stuff, it, it just works the way that we've always hoped it would, but and it, now, it now really does. You know, we have in, in really here is a, is a board focus around connectivity. As I, I just said, you know, we've got the new uh, MIPI transceivers, so the opportunity to use cameras with a greater bandwidth is going to be very, very interesting. Even you can use two LCD displays. You know, you can see there's many more mobile devices and edge devices because you've got that connectivity. We've got the PCIe connector, which um, wow. is not that fast. It's PCIe 2.01 lane, so that's up to about 500 megabytes a second. In practice, probably close to 400, but it's still very good connectivity to have. So I think this is going to be a board that's defined two ways. One, for the enthusiasts who want to use a Pi, the desktop experience is now so much better. And it wasn't bad at a Pi 4. But yeah. the other way on, for people who want to connect this to things with a lot of bandwidth, that's also going to be there as well. So, you know, you can imagine this with two cameras looked up to sort of storage as well, being used in all sorts of robot and edge type scenarios. So it's got an exciting future, I think. Over here on the Raspberry Pi desktop, I'm going to load up some applications and we can have a look and see how snappy this is. You'll notice there's a subtle fade and zoom effect. Let's try that with the terminal as well, and we can also launch browser. It now comes with a choice of browsers, you can actually run Firefox or Chromium. So here's a lineup of all the Raspberry Pis. We have the original Raspberry Pi, this one's signed by Evan there. We have the Raspberry Pi 1.2, the Raspberry Pi 2, the Raspberry Pi 3, the Raspberry Pi 4, and obviously the Raspberry Pi 5. You can see as well, the orientation of the Ethernet connector kind of changes throughout the life of the Pi. It was at the bottom of the board, and then for a short period during the Raspberry Pi 4, you can see that it moves to the top, and then it's now gone back to the bottom of the board again. You can see the camera and display connectors at the bottom here. You can see that they're split. The other thing that's notable on the Raspberry Pi 5 is the absence of the audio jack. So every previous generation has this audio jack on there, but the Raspberry Pi 5 has now not got that. The other things that are notable are these new little JST connectors, one for the fan, one for UART for debugging, and one connector for the real-time clock battery. We can also see the PCI Express connector there, which is now occupying the space that the old display connector used to use. Apart from that, the rest of the connectors are the same. We've got USB-C, we have the two micro HDMI, and on the back we have the upgraded micro SD card slot. You'll also notice on the Raspberry Pi 5, we have two new mounting holes. There's one here and one here. And this is for this new active cooling unit, which is a fan and a sensor for temperature as well. You can see it's got this nice laser engraved Raspberry Pi logo just there as well. So that sits on all three main chips. It'll be an interesting design challenge for engineers when they're making a hat that features the new M2 slot for extra storage. So that's the lineup for single board computers. Let's try out one of the new features, which is using two cameras. So I've got this set up on here. This is a, a monitor that I use for all my pies, and I've actually got two display windows. You can see one camera in one and one camera in the other one. So I'm putting my finger over camera one and camera zero alternately, and you, and you can see there that my finger is obscuring one camera and then the other camera. 
There is also a new power supply for the Raspberry Pi 5. This one is a 5 amp, 5 volt DC. And with the board requiring up to 5 amps, this means you can no longer use a mobile phone charger like you have been able to get away with on previous generations. You can see there the activity light uh, is now there and there's a little push button to turn the Pi on and off. So you can do one push to indicate that you want to turn the Pi off and another extended push will actually force the shutdown. That's now gone off. If I press that to come back on, just takes a couple of seconds and you've got the Pi desktop there. You can see the active cooling, the fan's running and once it's booted up, it'll actually stop running the fan. Hope you enjoyed this video and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.